Consistently carrying games as ADC is without a doubt one of the most infuriating things to try and do. The role has absolutely zero agency until the mid and late game when you start dealing meaningful damage, but by then the game has been decided by all the early game focused roles. Looking at you junglers and supports! And because those other roles have all the early control, if they suck then your entire game is going to suck, right? Well, what if we told you that there is an incredibly easy way to pull off strategy that significantly increases the likelihood that you will always get the better support and even jungler? Sounds like a bait, but there actually is something very simple that you can try to attempt every game to make your teammates perform significantly better, and that's simply to permanently shove the wave into your opponents. We're going to go over the details as to why this is so potent at carrying bad supports, and you'll soon realize that if you can learn to properly pull this off every game, that you're going to be winning the entire early game for your team significantly more often. To test how effective this strategy is as well, we even had a gold elo volunteer who doesn't even main ADC try it in their games, and the results were incredibly promising even without any prior practice doing so. But before getting into all the perks of this strategy, we've got to address something. Although you can technically apply this tactic on any ADC, there's three marksmen we'd highly recommend so that you can try to brute force it as often as possible. Caitlyn, Sivir, and Zaya should generally be your go-to picks when looking to permashove, since their wave clear can usually overcome any bad matchup. Other ADCs can be viable at attempting this, but are generally a bit more reliant on the matchup. For example, Tristana and Jinx are insanely potent if they're able to spam shove waves, since their wave clear comes simply from auto attacking and not mana activated spells. Unfortunately, they can easily be zoned in certain matchups, or if their support isn't useful. Our three previous recommendations are based on the fact that Sivir, Caitlyn, and Zaya can all single-handedly brute force lane control, almost regardless of the other three champions in the lane, at least in the lower elos. With that out of the way, let's actually cover all the crazy perks that you're going to experience if you pull this off properly. And don't worry, we're sure you're going to have concerns regarding this as you listen, and we'll make sure to address all of those later on in the guide. First up, as we briefly mentioned at the start of the guide, the lane is often dictated by which support is playing better. If your support is having a good game, you generally have a good game, but if they're not performing, you're going to feel helpless alongside them. It may be easy to forget, but try to keep in mind that the enemy ADC goes through the same problem, and the beauty of permashoving minion waves into your opponent is that you're not only going to make sure your support can screw up less often, but the enemy support is much more likely to mess up as well. Think about it, let's say the wave is in the middle of the lane, consider how much your support has to actually process to play those situations properly. They have to know how to trade relative to the minion wave, they also have to know simple parallel trading guidelines, then they have to think about how to trade based on the specific matchup they're playing, or if they should even be trading at all. Factor the enemy jungle and all of that, and you clearly have the reason why it feels like your support trolls trades most of your games. You're not playing with experts, your support is bound to mess something up when there's so much that they need to get right. Therefore, the goal of permashoving is to get rid of as many factors that could mess them up as possible. You want to make it nearly impossible for your support to be able to screw up anything, and by constantly having wave advantage and zero enemy minions to worry about, the chances of your support failing something goes down dramatically. Remember that we mentioned that we had a lower elo ADC try this strategy? Take a look at what happened during his game. Just once, only once during a 10 minute period did our volunteer Sivir elect to try and set up a long term freeze to deny some minions. In this brief time period, notice what his allied Zareth is doing. He's moving really far up past the minions to try and zone the enemy duo mostly by himself. Of course, this is correct by him to do, but as an ADC, it should come as absolutely no shock that the Zareth completely mispositions and loses his entire health bar along with his flash instantly. This causes our volunteer Sivir to remember what we asked of him and to immediately start permanently shoving every single wave into his opponents whenever he has the chance to do so. And immediately upon doing so, his Zareth that looked like a complete fool begins putting a ton of pressure on the enemy duo with his long range poke. This is the point of permanently shoving waves into your opponent. It's hard for your own support to look bad if you remove any possibility of them being able to make a mistake. So all that's left is the possibility of them looking good. But the more important part is that this strategy also increases the likelihood that your opponents mess up as well. Remember that one of the most basic fundamental principles of trading is fighting around a minion advantage. So the goal for your own support is to give them a constant minion advantage, making trading a breeze. But on the flip side, if you always have a minion lead, then it means that your opponents are obviously at a minion deficit. Thus, any fight that they try to engage in will generally go your way. And your opponents will fight, because that's just what players do. Remember, you're playing against real, alive, actual people. 
players who are being spam shoved in the whole game and being poked and harassed under tower will inevitably get tilted and actually try to fight you, despite being at a complete disadvantage based on the wave. Not only does perma shoving nearly guarantee that all trades and fights will go your way, but it also gives you permanent priority during the laning phase, which is massively important in the chaotic nature of solo queue. Think about how many fights randomly begin in the river over Scuttle or a Dragon or even nothing. If you're the one with priority, you can always be the one to respond first, regardless of whatever it is that's going on in the river. Not only that, but you have access to free recalls whenever you want them. If you're the one always pushing the wave, then you can never take a bad recall. The wave will never be frozen against you, and you'll never have to concede a wave to base. You'll always be the one with the first move, and getting good recall timings is definitely a massive perk. Okay, these all sound like really nice advantages, but as we said at the start, you might have some concerns about all this. No strategy is perfect, so what's the downside to spam shoving waves? First, let's address something important. If you're spam shoving waves, does that mean that you should completely disregard slow pushing and freezing and just perma shove the whole time? Absolutely not. In cases where it is incredibly valuable to do so, these tactics are still great to use. For example, if you forced your opponent to take a bad base timing early on, then of course setting up a freeze and denying them a ton of farm and experience as they walk back to lane is the correct answer. Shoving the wave and fixing the problem for your opponent would obviously be a bit silly. Or if you're planning to crash a big wave to set up a good recall timing, such as a cheater recall, then of course slow pushing is a good option. Basically what we're recommending is that you save those two wave tactics for when you're guaranteed high value off of them. As we saw earlier from our gold elo player replay, the Sivir was trying to get a bit of value out of a freeze, and everything went horribly, so if you're not gaining good value out of those wave tactics, then it's not worth the risk of your support failing things miserably as you try to utilize them. There's also the most obvious concern of all when it comes to permanently shoving waves into your opponent's tower all the time. Sure, the advantages are there, but doesn't this just open you up to being ganked constantly since you're permanently overextending? Not necessarily, and in fact, if you play things properly, you very often are much less likely to be ganked for multiple reasons. First, if you have priority, you or your support will have the liberty of using your extra lane control to establish more forward or deeper vision. With ample warning before being ganked, it shouldn't matter how overextended you are as you'll have plenty of time to walk away. Two, using that map awareness to waste an enemy jungler's time can provide your team insane amounts of pressure. In this game, Sivir immediately saw Lee Sin heading towards bottom, and yet she continued to play incredibly in her opponent's faces. As you can see, this baited the enemy Lee to try and help, which is a complete waste of time. Unless Sivir and Braum overcommitted, there's never a world in which they die to a pre-scouted gank. A good side note in regards to this as well is that if you're planning to play this way, then rushing tier 2 boots every single game will almost always be the optimal buy. Being able to react to people trying to collapse onto you is very valuable and will enable you to play incredibly forward despite the potential of being ganked. Lastly, there is the final defense you have against ganks, which is that you can simply just turn them around. Think back to all those times your jungler decides to gank for you while there's a massive wave at your tower and just end up inting your lane. Again, the point of permanently shoving is that there is always a wave in your opponent's face. To help your jungler, the enemy duo has to walk through a wave, which can often cause an uncoordinated attempt to kill you. These situations can very easily result in you just killing the enemy jungler as they come in, helping you snowball even further. If anything, the game will be much easier if you're constantly baiting the enemy team to try to gank you. They'll always be walking through areas that you should have vision in, which can allow you and your teammates to set up counterplays very easily. Finally, the last point we want to cover is what to do if you can't actually get wave control. What if you're Caitlyn versus a Sivir and she's fighting to spam shove waves just as hard as you are? What then? Well, that's where all our other strategies come in. Learning how to trade, get better recalls, enabling your support, etc. can allow you to have better control of the lane so that even when you're in an equal footing matchup that you can still come out ahead and begin perma shoving as quickly as possible. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1,600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. 
We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting, where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $4.99 a month if you are serious about improving. Good luck, and see you next time.